Hey there, this is Eric from Dust Haven, and this is my rock screener, uh, soil sifter, soil filter. You, I think the, the, uh, there's a, a company that makes a product called a Rock Grizzly, so I don't think I should call it that because that's their, that's their name, not mine. Uh, but if you look around for Rock Grizzlies, soil sifters, rock filters, things like that, you're gonna see this kind of a thing. So what I did is I needed to be able to separate out and get uh, sand over here with a uh, you know, small aggregate. And then I needed to be able to get my rocks over here. And I have a loader that can lift up and dump it down. So why don't we take a minute and I'll show you how I put this thing together. The welding process went fairly well, but I should add that I only very recently started welding. There was a free course offered in my community, so a few times a week for a couple of months, I was getting the basics on metal fabrication. If you're interested in welding, I would really recommend something like that. It doesn't make you great, but it puts you in a good place where you can start building experience and maybe not learn bad habits. For materials, I opted for eighth inch two by two steel angle, mainly because the eighth inch one by one is what I used in class. So I thought, well, what the hell, I'll just go a little bigger. It's about 90 feet of steel, which comes out to about 150 pounds, and then close to 200 when you add on the expanded steel. Enough that I can muscle it around, and with some detachable wheels, it might not even be that bad. I thought about some attachments for my loader, and maybe for a V2, I'll make some slots for pallet jacks or something like that. I should add that the expanded steel, the part that functions as the grate, isn't here in this little stop motion video, and that'll get added on later. But it's a 4x8 piece, so that's what I built and designed it for. I was really worried about how to keep things square and level, and funny enough, with bigger and rougher products like this, I think I did okay with just measuring over and over and over again. I did a lot of tack welds, then moved around welding in different areas to try to uh, manage the heat a bit and made pretty good use of my clamps. I used up a two pound welding spool halfway through the project, and then on the first day I didn't wear any kind of respirator. I ended up getting a wicked headache and learned that even outside welding, fumes are no joke. And uh, even, you know, especially if you're going to be welding like all day, like I was, it just gets up in your hood and you're just breathing that stuff in and it's no good for you. This is my first real welding project, and as I built it, I diverged from my plans a bit. I threw on those diagonal braces, and that really beefed the structure up a lot and made use of some scrap material. Uh, those 345 degree angle pieces coming down are gonna support the width of my bucket, and since I'm using expanded steel, I think there will be enough rigidity that I can leave the outer ones off. I'm interested to see how the wheels work out. They're only there for moving this thing around by hand, and then you pop them off, and I guess I hope the axles don't get totally crushed. Uh, if they do, oh well, at least it helped me load this on to the back of my pickup, and it was a fun experience. So that was the welding part. And like I said, I learned a lot from the welding process. It actually worked out okay uh, getting it uh, out here. So it's a couple hours in order to drive out to our uh, property out here. And uh, funny enough, I managed to get that thing into the back of my pickup truck all by myself and uh, kept it secured in there. It didn't cause any accidents, although I was pretty white knuckled the whole time and uh, managed to get it, out of the, get it out of the pickup. And you can see that the uh, wheels now, I basically just covered up the axles with some uh, scrap PVC that I had laying around to keep those from getting banged up. Another thing that I uh, didn't show is the uh, part where I made that piece of plywood uh, up front but that you can probably guess uh, how I went about doing that. I took a piece of plywood and cut out the notches for, um, to make it fit flush. And um, I'll kind of show you how that assembly process went once I actually got here and got it out of the truck. Okay, so why did I do this thing? Well, there's a couple reasons. And the first one is, is because I need, uh, I need this stuff and I need this stuff, but I don't need this stuff, all right? So for uh, doing earth bag work, which is how I like to build with things, or if you're doing Adobe or you're gonna plaster, or even if you're gonna maybe mix up concrete, right? Like you know what the actual um, sand, sand and clay and silt ratio is, is not hard to do. You can use like a jar test to sort that out. 
Um, but what you're going to need is you're going to need those uh, a lot of these big chunky rocks kind of out of there, right? Um, likewise, if you need to have those big chunky rocks, if you need that gravel, then you want that gravel and you don't want any of that sand in there. So it's a pretty typical thing. Now, one of the easiest ways of solving this problem is that you can just call somebody up that uh, has a, you know, something a lot more complicated than this and they'll just deliver it to you, right? But when you need to get, uh, you know, many, many, many tons, many, many, many yards of material, for us, it's a, it's a three hour drive one way for those rigs to be able to get up here. Um, and also we've actually had a, um, uh, you know, a tractor trailer with an 80 foot uh, trailer on the back and he wasn't able to really get up the roads here. So it can be really, just, just getting this kind of material on site can be really difficult. If you live in an area where, you know, it's a half an hour for somebody to do delivery for you, no big deal. If you only need a few yards, no big deal. But if you have a whole bunch of land and you have a whole bunch of this stuff literally underneath your feet and you've got a tractor and a backhoe, then building something like this can be really advantageous for you. So another thing that I've learned just from running this thing for, this was basically three bucket loads, I think. Uh, and this is, well, that's also three bucket loads, just kind of coming off the top there. Um, so I built it, I looked up the specs for my uh, LA525 uh, loader to see how high it would get um, with the maximum dump. And it was somewhere around six feet or so but you can tell that the ground around me isn't too level. So I gave myself a few inches, but it's actually like when, my, when I come up with my loader, I tilt a little bit and I can on the, when I uh, open up the bucket all the way, I can bang the top of that thing. So just something to consider. Uh, maybe if you have that kind of a tight margin, don't have your most inexperienced operator doing this thing because they might just taco this whole, this whole thing right now. Um, another thing I learned is wind. So, I hope, I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully you can't. There's not a lot of wind running right now, but you can see, if you can see that pile right there, it is really fine material. We don't call this place Dust Haven for nothing. It is really, you know, amazingly fine, silty kind of alkaline dust around here. And uh, when you dump this stuff down, whoo boy, I think I just basically uh, chewed up an entire air filter just with a few bucket loads and that amount of sand kind of flying right back. So why don't I actually show you what that looked like when I ran that thing for uh, just, like I said, just a few couple bucket loads there. <laughs> So overall, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Um, I'm gonna probably spend a little bit more time tomorrow working this a little bit. Uh, one thing I was kind of wondering is where I was I gonna get the material from? And uh, fortunately for me, my uh, driveway is pretty lumpy. I haven't uh, actually finished it yet, and it's got a lot of lumps in it. So lumps mean material that I can scrape off the top, and then I can uh, use the backhoe to scrape, you know, kind of dig in, and then I can use the loader, ram into that, lift it up, and then I can use this to screen it out. So I have those kinds of, you know, things that are available to me. One thing that I actually think I'm gonna do, that this might seem insane, but if you saw that amount of dust that was kicking around, and definitely if you're breathing it in like I was, is I think I might get a little stick with just a little telltale, like a little ribbon flag sitting on it. 
So I can just tell because the wind tends to move around here pretty quickly in the mountains. Um, so if you're lucky, the wind blows that way and you're good to go. But if you're not, the wind blows right, uh, you know, right into your face and you're going to get dusted up. So I think if I wait, you know, if I have a full bucket load and I wait a few seconds, that might mean the difference between me, like I said, chewing up a or needing to blow out an air filter at the end of the day versus maybe, uh, you know, not having to. Um, but overall, it's been, been great just again for the little bit. I was wondering whether the attachment was going to be janky, just kind of running the uh, bracing wire from the gabion cages in order to secure it down to the frame, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, nothing has gotten caught on it yet. A uh, little bit of, you know, kind of sagebrushy scrub stuff has, but no pebbles, nothing like that's gotten in there. I imagine it will over time. Um, and the reason I wanted to do that too, the, why I just used that bracing wire, was because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to put on there. And expanded steel comes in different sizes. So for the earth bag fill, this is totally fine. Um, in fact, I could actually go a little bit bigger for the earth bag fill and, and be a okay. You can get stuff that's you know pr pretty big in there and, and, and be fine with it. But especially if I want to use it for plaster, for plaster, if you want to have like a uh, um, you, you can't have your plaster. I think that what I remember correctly was if you're putting on a quarter inch, a quarter inch thick um, layer, you don't. You want your largest uh, piece of aggregate in there to be like an eighth inch, right? So if you're going to put on an eighth inch um, layer, you want your largest piece to be a sixteenth inch. So depending upon what you're doing, you may need to run it through twice. You may want to put on a different grate. And I like the fact that with this. It's pretty easy for me just to go ahead and uh, you know break those things, not even break them loose, just untwist them. I can reuse them. Um, put another grate on, uh, you know, for if I need to get different kinds of materials out and be good to go. So I think that actually worked out pretty good. Um, the other thing I did too, you could see I kind of painted the edges. I went and got, I just used half inch construction grade plywood. If I get a few years out of that, I'll be totally stoked. I spray painted the edges because, you know, the water kind of seeps into the edges and tends to be the part that explodes first. Uh, so I'm hoping to mitigate that a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that's it. That's my, um, my super cool, I think so anyway, uh, rock screener, won't call it a grizzly. And uh, total materials in, probably about uh, 800 bucks, something like that, um, for the plywood, for all the metal, uh, for the um, expanded steel across the top, for the wheels that I put on, the whole bit, probably about 800 bucks. Um, you could go a little cheaper, I guess, if you probably went with wood or something like that. But if you tried to get one of these things commercially, there's no way in heck you're gonna be able to pull that off for $800. And I'd say maybe uh, 10 hours of welding, but I'm a bad welder, so you might be able to go faster than me. Anyway, that's it. Uh, this is Eric from uh, Dust Haven. I hope you found this useful. Uh, remember to uh, like and subscribe. I can't believe I have to say that, but I'm trying to actually make this YouTube channel something that will be uh, useful for a lot of people because I'm out here learning some fun stuff. And I would have loved to have seen something like this with a lot of this information uh, before I just kind of went at it. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, this will be helpful for you. Anyway, take care. Um, yeah, do good work and uh, take care of yourself.